Grove Unleashed. Hey, welcome to another edition of Grove Unleashed. I am State Representative Seth Grove, and we got the full crew in today. Got Chuck Anders and Charlie. Guys, say hi. Hey, what's happening? Hello. Wow, that was kind of weak, guys. Can we do this again? Hello. 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 Oh, okay, we can't hey. harmonize. No. <laughs> wow. Well, harmonics are not in, so I guess no one's singing for their loved one on St. Valentine's Day? Are we are we ready for St. Valentine's Day, I heard guys? that you had a very nice Valentine's for the governor. I did. I uh, cut a little poem. Um, it's out on social media, so if you want to go watch it, uh, go hit up my Twitter page, uh, Instagram, Facebook. It's it's there. So you can It's so good even the House Dems comms people are commenting yeah. on it. Y- you know when, when their comms people comment, y- you know it's good because oh, yeah. they don't have an alternative to the message. And it's a u- very unique way to message. It's not... It's near Susian. Right. Yeah. It was very good. Well done, Anders. Well, I, I feel like I set you up for failure here because now your wife is going to be super jealous if you don't match that for her. Right. We'll have to, we'll have yeah. to cut a new video. Yeah. On how beautiful she is. <laughs> looking, looking longly into her blue eyes. Something along those lines. I don't know. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, Chuck. Day. Yeah. Don't forget flowers. Uh, but by the time you hear this, Valentine's Day is over. So I hope I hope you got the flowers and did everything. Yeah, this is breaking news to you. You're in a little bit of trouble. Just, right. just go with yeah. it. Big time. Big time. But you know who else is in trouble? Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro's in trouble. You may think, how is Josh in trouble? Well, he kind of proposed a budget that doesn't balance and kind of lies to you about the out year costs did he write a check that something can't cash yeah he kind of did he kind of did um it's not going well um so walk so walk us through what happened uh last week so the governor did his budget proposal and Mm -hmm. it wasn't in a traditional manner no so the house is closed because of a water leak that happened a year ago you heard that right. The House floor is closed. That's normally where we do a budget hearing, uh, our budget address, joint session. So they ended up having it in the main rotunda. We could have gone to the Senate, could have gone to the Forum Building. We could have gone a lot of places and actually had session. But we went to the main rotunda. We listed as non-voting session. They built um, a platform halfway up the steps with two... Um, little podiums or platforms for the uh, teleprompter the teleprompters um, and they were perfectly fitted designed to fit flush against the step so th- there was significant cost in that craftsmanship to do all that um, he had two ginormous screens with ginormous projectors and all kinds of technology um, I think they hired a PR firm or movie crew or something like that to, to do the logistics. Um, it was quite a production. It was almost reminiscent of a State of the Union address. Oh, it was. Um, it was a little more limited because he didn't necessarily, he had a few guests that he pointed to. Mm-hmm. Probably not as much as he did last year, but it still went an hour and a half. First hour was how much he wanted to spend. Second, last half hour was, um, you know, sticking his finger in the Senate Republicans' eyes who were in the majority party in, in the Senate and who he needs to actually... I guess wine and dine to get a budget done, um, and it was it was more of a I would say a, a Democrat rally than it was you know really a budget address. So he came out with this massive budget, three point seven billion dollar increase over last year, uh, eight point four percent increase. Um, the revenues aren't there to pay for it, so this is all recurring expenditures. So he wants to use one time money in the rainy day or not in the rainy day in the surplus fund to, to spend it, use half of that. Um, in like four years, he's going to have spent down both the surplus and rainy day fund close to $16 billion, and he's going to leave a bill. Uh, and that bill is going to be roughly a 46.3% increase in the income tax to fund it. But he doesn't plan on being here. Uh, he plans on being in Washington, D.C., so whoever his poor lieutenant governor is going to become governor with a massive deficit, and, you know, and that's what we're trying to prevent. Well, and I, and I think that's a, a great point um especially when you can you know you consider shapiro does his budget address on on tuesday Mm -hmm. and 
<clears throat> we're mostly focused on the state issues here. But a couple of days later, the uh, herd report came out, hashtag I'm with herd, uh, talking about Joe Biden's uh, mental acuity. And uh, shortly after that, the Wall Street Journal penned a, uh, an editorial um, basically calling this a tipping point on Biden's decline. And one of the things that the Wall Street Journal is predicting is that there will end up being a brokered convention for the Democratic nomination for president. And unsurprisingly, they talked about Gavin Newsom and Gretchen Whitmer being in that mix. And of course, Kamala Harris as well. But the one thing I, I took note of is it's possible they could rally behind a rising star Democrat like Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. You know, so mm -hmm. it's not just us here that are saying, well, it seems like he's got his interest a little where, you know, a little someplace else. He's got an eye over here. Um, it's beginning to, to pick up some national steam, too. Yeah. Um, when you talk about the teleprompter, I can't help but think about that. You know, the, usually you think of presidents when you think of teleprompters. Yeah. So, you know. And, and you know, I mean, th this isn't new. I mean, uh, Governor Shapiro, first time he's governor of Pennsylvania, he doesn't go to Democrat state committee dinner, like their big annual dinner. He skips it to go to New Hampshire's same night. Like the only reason to do that is you want to go connect with New Hampshire voters uh, early on because they have an early primary, right? Like the, the, it's, it, well, you're the new governor, you go to your states. Like it's your first term, first time. You want to go and thank them. You want to build that national mm -hmm. notoriety. And I think that's a lot of his budget address. He wanted to hit national tones to get national news media. Um, this is just a stepping stone. And, and one of my big problems in politics a lot of time people don't do the job they have. They're always after the next job, right? Which means you're not doing the job you have to the best of your ability. I, I don't know. Like, I like to work. I always believe if you do the job you have, you're going to get promoted. Anywhere. Anywhere you work. If you put the hard work in and do the job you have, you will get promoted. You know, it, it is inevitable. Um, politics, I don't know why people get a job and then it's always the next job like it's just it's it's a little it's annoyance of mine and i think that's what we're seeing here with the governor like he 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 you know he was a state rep went to the county became attorney general um you know governor it, like everything's just like the stepping stone had so. a stop in pccd to help build his creds on law enforcement right. because he wasn't you know he was he's an attorney but he wasn't a prosecutor or anything right. like that so you know he's he's it's done things to, right Right. get it's, him where he wants to go right all that expense we wouldn't need because we would just be in the it would, it would just be a session week we'd be in the chambers he'd come over give his announcement and then be gone instead of having um huge lanyards and um, hundreds of troopers hundreds yep. 100 140 150 troopers plus a sniper of a, really a, plus fence, a, sniper. a fence wow. in front of the capitol right. we we can we can build a fence and we can have uh, we can bolster security at the Capitol, but, but we can't build a wall, can we? Yeah, down South uh, May he refuses to send National Guard down to to protect our southern border down in uh, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. And a lot of governors are doing that because there's a direct impact on securing the border and drug overdose deaths, human trafficking, the whole nine yards. Show some, you got to show some leadership, like protecting your own butt, giving your your um, State of the Union address. Um, at the Capitol, um, you can provide all the security, all the protections, but protecting the citizens of this state and this country. You likened the, the, the budget and the proposals at one point to how we do personal finances, how, how a person. Right. So can, can you walk us through this idea of, you know, the checking account and the savings account? Right. How do you take the state budget, right. which is billions of dollars, and distill it down in a way that makes sense yeah. for the average Pennsylvania. So we, there's there's three main counts we're talking about. So you have the general fund, you have this general fund surplus, and you have the rainy day fund. Think of it when you look at your your, your bank statement. You have a, a checking account, right? Your main account for checking. So you're paying all your bills out of that account. You have an overdraft account. The overdraft account is set up to put money aside just in case there's something that pops up unexpected. Maybe your kids decide to buy a bunch of new games and in-game apps and 
iTunes and rent a movie here or something, pop, right? just stuff pops up. You know, unexpected, hey, the kid gets invited to a birthday party, the whole nine yards, something unexpected. So you don't go to zero balance and you go, don't get hit with service fees. And then you have your savings account, right? Your savings account gets built up for emergency situations um, just so you have it. Or you may do segregate it out. Like I want to put uh, money aside um, to do a down payment in a new car. Um, I want to, I want to, you know, put a new deck on the house. I want to do something. So you may have like some separate accounts, but generally you're saving up for something and protect yourself from a rainy day or an economic downturn. You, you, maybe you get laid off. Maybe, maybe unfortunately lose your job. You want to have money set aside to continue funding your finances until you get a job and get it back up. I know a lot of people who do call it themselves their rainy day fund, including myself and my fiance. We have a rainy day fund. Right. It's not. Yeah, these things are basic, you know, household budgeting things that you would think that right. somebody as uh, successful as a governor would understand, right. but it doesn't seem like that is the case. So what he wants to do is say, okay, we have a checking account, that's the general fund, and then we have just a savings account. So he, he takes the rainy day fund and he takes a budget surplus and lumps into one and say we have $14 billion, and if you pass my budget as is, we still have $11 billion and everything's fine. But that's not the case because they're in, in statute by law. There, it's two separate things. The rainy day fund by statute says you cannot use the money in here except for economic downturns. Right? That's it. The the budget surplus sits there and it really acts as an overdraft account because we're spending money. So money comes into the Commonwealth and leaves the Commonwealth on a day to day basis, and there are times where we don't have enough money to cover bills and treasury needs to go out and borrow money from special funds which adds cost for liquidity for cash flow within within that checking account that buffer on with that surplus acts as that overdraft account so that doesn't occur on the annual basis which means you lower the cost for the citizens of pennsylvania plus credit rating agencies see that and say you know what we're going to lower your 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 credit rating so you get cheaper bonds and save dollars that way by him lumping it together it just it's it acts as if it's just the governor's slush fund to use whenever like magically money just automatically comes back when that money is gone it's gone so what he wants to do is take the overdraft account and the savings account put it all in the checking account and pay your monthly mortgage with it so he wants to pay our monthly mortgage as taxpayers with the savings account. And everybody knows what's happened. Plus, he wants to add more costs on top of it. So now he's buying, um, not only does he want the top rated Comcast plan, plus the highest internet, but he wants all the premium streaming channels, all the pay channels. Buy Mercedes, get right. that car payment right. on there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go buy a new car, I'm gonna go buy a Mercedes, I'm gonna finance it. And he's using one-time funds to, to, to pay all that. And let's say you have enough where you can pay for five years, right? I'm going to pay all these bills with all my savings account for the next five years. In five years, all that money is ran out, and you're handed all these huge expenses. How are you going to pay for it? That's what he's setting up financially for this commonwealth. Now, he assumes in five years um, he's going to be president of the United States, so he's not worried about it. So that same assumption is in five years – I will have won the lottery by then. So I can pay all this stuff off and I'll have income there where I can just pay for this for the rest of my life. That's what he is assuming. Well, the, the interesting thing, too, is that we don't have to assume how Governor Shapiro would respond to you because we actually already have the audio of that. Let's take a listen. We have the headlines this morning. More money for schools and SEPTA. No tax increases. Funding coming from legalizing recreational marijuana and tapping into Pennsylvania's $14 billion surplus. I want to talk about that excess cash first. Let's hear from Seth Grove, the uh, top Republican on the State House Budget Committee. Suppose you're fortunate to have earned enough money to pack away for an emergency. Would you spend it on everyday expenses or save it for when you find yourself in a financial type spot? The Independent Fiscal Office projecting a $13 billion operating deficit over the next uh, five years. That's before new spending, including on full and fair school funding. Uh, Representative Grove says your plan is irresponsible. Given those projections, spending will exceed revenue in the next fiscal year. Is he wrong? 
totally. And let me break this down for you. Um, I, I Look, I get that there are some politicians who are in the Capitol who are just opposed to everything that I put forth. They sort of feel like it's their job to be partisan. I get that. Let's walk through the math here. There is a $14 billion surplus. That means that over time, politicians in Harrisburg have taken $14 billion more from the good people of Pennsylvania than they need. And then they brag about how they've kept it in some bank account in Harrisburg instead of investing it back in the good people of Pennsylvania, as I want to do. My budget is balanced. It doesn't raise taxes. In fact, it cuts them. It makes significant investments in important things like education, economic development, public transit, just to name a few. So it's it's really interesting to hear that response from the governor because the data they cited while well, well, I had the comments on, you know, you wouldn't do this at home like like we just discussed. The IFO, the Independent Fiscal Office, is a nonpartisan entity. They review the finances of the Commonwealth. They came back with a $13 billion deficit. That wasn't just Seth Grove. That is an independent review of our finances without his massive spending, with, without massive increases that he's projecting, just the status quo. If we do nothing else, we will have a $13 billion deficit in five years. So when you add his $3.7 billion on top, year one, plus the massive amounts he wants to do in the future, that only balloons and, and becomes quicker. Assuming that we don't add any spending in the out years. Correct. Which he does in order to make it seem that way. So I think the first thing that really strikes me about that is the reporter asked the governor, is the budget balanced? Is Seth Grove uh, wrong? And he goes, totally. You're totally wrong. Does that mean that he didn't read his own budget materials? Because his own budget materials make it clear, we're not bringing in enough revenue to cover the cost of this budget. Correct. And and that's that's why I think what he wants to say, it's balanced. We balanced it on paper, right? Again, taking this back to, to your house, that is like saying, um, you know, uh, bank, um, just ignore the fact that I have – Five hundred dollars in my checking account, and I'm I'm cutting this check for eight hundred dollars. Um, I have magic money sitting here, asterisk, wink, wink, to cover that at some point. Just just go ahead and approve that check. It won't it won't bounce. It's fine, right? It's that same concept of recklessly overspending when he doesn't need to. But again, this budget and this process isn't about you, the taxpayers. It is not about programs. It's not about long-term sustainability of government programs, whether they work. I mean, we haven't even gotten into what works and what doesn't work in state budget. This is just throwing more money to solve problems. Or is it just throwing more money at a wish list? Right. That's basically what it is. Um, it, just, it just doesn't work financially. They know it because just because we're sitting on billions of dollars one time doesn't mean it's, it's balanced in the sense of um, how much money we have to spend in recurring revenue and how much he wants to send out in recurring expensive. Because what he wants is not one time. A billion dollars in, in basic education funding is not a one time. He wants a billion dollars every increase every single year. So year one, it's a billion. Year two, it's two billion. Year three, it's three billion. Year four, it's four billion. Year five, it's five billion. Year six is six billion. And year seven, it's seven billion dollars. And, and there's a lot. his goal. There's a lot to unpack in in what he's trying to say and he's trying to accuse of. And one of the things that he says there is that the citizens of Pennsylvania have been overtaxed or we've taken too much of your money. Why do we have a surplus? Where did that come from? Right. That surplus came from federal COVID dollars um, between 2021, 2022. 20, 2020, 21, 2020, 2022 fiscal years that we suppl sub supplanted federal dollars for state dollars. So we didn't have to spend all of our state dollars. That's how we created that. Because we were in a structural deficit prior to that. It was $2 billion. That happened. They kind of bailed the, that reality and masked it over. Now we're back without COVID and all that federal dollars. So now we're back to a deficit, which he could correct. Like it is a correct right now, it is a correctable issue with the amount of revenues we have. 
if you actually limit the amount of spending and make make actual good decisions, you could actually eliminate it this year if you wanted to. Um, he does the complete opposite and say, hey, revenues were doing pretty good. We're just going to spend all the revenues plus all this additional dollars. Um, and two, if he thinks people are overtaxed, he is not proposing returning the money to you. He is spending it. And on, then raising the income tax later on. Correct. He is spending it, and he's going to spend it all, and then he's going to jack up taxes. So, But he said in his comments there that his proposal cuts taxes. It cuts taxes. He's maintaining the Wolf corporate net income tax cut. That's it. That is the only tax because rates are going to go down. That's it. So if you're a corporation, so if you pay CNI, some small businesses do, um, if you pay the corporate net income tax, you're going to get a tax cut this year. That's it. And that's not something he has did. Nothing, yeah. Correct. He has nothing to do with that Matter of fact, all. he proposed eliminating elimination of, of cell phone taxes, which was a campaign promise. Didn't get that done last year. So um, his budget last year raised um, 911 fees and didn't get rid of the tax so he would be a wash. It just His budget last year was just a tax increase. So he also talks about another interesting um, proposal in this year's budget, which is um, legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. So how do you, as a state legislator, envision that working? I really don't know. Um, we don't really have any details. Um, you know, we have a – right now he has it set up where we're going to have two different systems operated by two different state agencies. So we have medical marijuana under Department of Health. He wants recreational uh, uh, marijuana operated out of ag. Two completely different systems, two completely different agencies, two completely different regulatory regimes, two, two, two completely – different entities that you can spend money on both <laughs> right we have one that one one that's already doing this that we could just have them regulate the other one and instead let's have two completely so independent systems what right. kind of in how, what kind of revenue are we even looking at if we do legalize re recreational use marijuana the max in his budget documents in out years is 250 million so he plans on Balancing a six point some odd billion dollar deficit with two hundred fifty million dollars from right. recreational marijuana. Right. Even this year's budget alone, three point seven billion dollar increase. Uh, it brings in fifteen million this year. That's all. That's all he's projecting. Fifteen million this year to increase to two hundred fifty million the next year. He wants to do skill games. His uh, actually his entire revenue um, construct is actually a negative eighty one million dollars negative 81 million dollars because he wants to do transfers out of the general fund to other areas in the budget so he is a negative revenue of 81 million dollars positive 3.7 billion dollars in spending one like, thing that this really is this is what we're talking about a failed government financing there's no difference between what he's doing now and what the federal government has been doing forever the difference is we can't call the fed and say print more money or move the decimal over mm -hmm. uh, to get us more money like, when we're out, we're out. Yeah. One thing that really struck me with his comments there, too, is that he obviously does not listen to the number one House Republican podcast, uh, Grove Unleashed. Because if you remember, during his last, his previous right. budget address, we gave him props for this, for it being a moderate budget proposal. Right. And now he's over here calling you some kind of partisan politician who's just disagreeing with it to disagree right. with it. I think it's very clear that, Republicans and independents alike are disagreeing with this budget proposal because it is completely irresponsible and unaffordable. No. Yeah, and the, the other thing he's been saying is come to us with come to me with ideas on what you want to do. How do you want to fix the budget? How do you want to balance the budget? What do you want to do? And you uh, recently wrote a column in uh, Broad and Liberty where you actually talked about, well, I have an idea, and it's not even really mine. It's, it's yours. Yeah. Um, and we brought this up last year during the budget, um, dur during one of, one of my media um, um, briefings that I do um, a couple times a year with the media on financial stuff. Um, and it, it's, it's really easy. When 
Governor Shapiro was a commissioner from Montgomery County. Him and his budget secretary, his current budget secretary, Yuri Munson, was a budget guy for Montgomery County. They had a structural deficit, per, by his own words, was a percentage higher than Governor Wolf's at the time. Now, Governor Wolf proposed massive tax increases and massive spending, whole nine yards to fix it. They did it without raising taxes um, and balance the budget using, you ready? Drum roll, zero based budgeting. Basically, he said everybody goes to zero, every single line item goes to zero. Uh, give us a Every, every department head, give us a paragraph on your core function and mission. And then we're going to take all these lines and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, you're out, right? If it fits, we're going to have a discussion about effectiveness of that program and how, how much funding you should get based on your performance and stuff like that. And it worked. You know where else it worked? The state of Washington. During the Great Depression, a Democrat governor did zero in performance-based budgeting and was able to balance their budget without a tax increase uh, and really added more dollars to um, uh, education and, and all those kind of core areas people tend to talk about and stuff like that. They did it without tax increases using the same model. It's something that works. Democrats and Republicans alike have used it. He has used it, and he has done nothing to implement it. It's interesting, too, because he, and uh, I'm going to quote again the governor when he was commissioner, and, um, you know, one staffer apparently came to him and said, this isn't how we do it, and Shapiro ended the meeting, and he, he said, quote, people either became converts or no longer worked here. That's how serious he took zero-based budgeting. You know, you either went with the program or you left. And instead, what we're seeing here is a continuation of, I'm just going to throw money. I'm going to throw money around. I'm going to increase this line. I'm increase this line. I'm throw money here, throw money there, throw money here. And it's just a, a, a complete 180 from the management style that he did when he was a Montgomery County commissioner. And to be, to be clear, zero-based budgeting is something Republicans have pushed for for some time. Yeah, it's it's not new. Let, let's 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 walk backwards a little bit. If Josh Pierre's end goal is to get to Washington D.C. in the White House as President of the United States, let's look at all their financial problems they're having. Right? If if I'm going to that spot, I want a history of saying I have closed deficits with Republicans, with Democrats. I've brought them together. I've transformed the the budget process. I've transformed our fiscal policies to make sure we're doing investment. I put X money into education and 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 protect our most vulnerable and Department of Human Services and did this and did that. And I did it with, with closing a structural deficit and making sure we're, we're sound finances. The bond ratings have continually decreased. We are a better, healthier financial state. We've gained population. We've done all this stuff. What's what's the Republican comeback to that? Right? None. None. You, you've done it. Like, if you can do it at, at Pennsylvania, it's something you can carry in foray into a, a presidential run because that's basically what people are talking about. My God, Congress is looking at a fiscal commission to decide how to fix their, their, their woes. Like, you can build the model and say, here's my fiscal commission. It was the Republican Senate and the House Democrats, you know, progressives and the conservatives. I got them both together and we, we marched forward on balancing the budget without deficits. Like, that's your strong talking point to be president of the United States. What he's doing is the typical politician mm -hmm. on the progressive side. And, and let, let's, again, this is Josh Shapiro's own words in 2016. I believe zero-based budgeting is the most important thing governments can do. From Harrisburg to D.C., the debate is always about taxes and spending, when what we should be doing is starting our budget at zero, defining our core mission, and then funding it. Well, one thing we should all probably know about Governor Shapiro at this point is the fact that he doesn't stick to his own word. I mean, let's look at his campaign right. promises. So beyond zero-based budgeting, there was uh, school choice, completely walked back on that and caused this entire last budget's impasse. Uh, look at Reggie. He said he was opposed to Reggie, I'm pretty sure, yep. or mm -hmm. said that he wanted to kind of scale back from it at least. 
now he is looking to continue with Reggie. I, I really do not. Cell phone tax. I'm going to eliminate cell your cell phone, phone tax. tax. Couldn't it hasn't get happened. Through. Right. Just time and time again, we see examples of Governor Shapiro not keeping his word. I, I think, and that's that's kind of ha- that's what's the problem been in Harrisburg. How do you negotiate with a, a moving target? Um, and, and not to mention, like House Democrats do not want like House Democrats' idea of negotiation is here's where we're at. We're getting all this stuff. If you want stuff, add it in and we're done. Like, that's not how you negotiate. It's give and take. I want this. You want this. We can't agree to that. We'll move on. Um, it, it takes a lot of work. And you have to build trust, too. Like, you have to sit across from the table with someone. You have to have some kind of relationship, some kind of trust that says, okay, we agree and we're going to move forward. We have a deal and it's going to move forward to fruition. The governor's going to sign it and we're done. Um, that did not take place last year. Um, I, I hear things got better. They ended up, but it's a dink and dunk mentality that got it done. Um, it wasn't some big global agreement on a budget. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. We already heard from uh, my counterpart in the House uh, in January. Like he would like to see a budget done, but if they don't get their priorities, we're going to have a late budget. Um, Senator Pittman, um, the leader in the, in the Senate, said something similar after the governor's budget address. So we're not heading towards kumbaya. Uh, in, on a budget, particularly the size and scope of what the governor just uh, introduced. And I have no doubt the, the House Democrats fully support that. And maybe it's, it might not be enough for them, too. So what's next? What are the next steps here in the budget process? Uh, next steps, we, we House and Senate will hold budget hearings where state agencies will come in front of uh, the Appropriations Committee and validate their budget requests. Um, that takes three weeks, and then we'll be back in session finally, uh, both House and Senate. Um, and there won't be a lot of budget discussion. There might be budget bil- bills. Like, I suspect the House Democrats will advance uh, uh, recreational marijuana bill over to the Senate for budget negotiations, uh, a couple of their priorities. Uh, at some point, the Senate or the House Democrats are probably going to move a, a full budget over to the Senate for negotiation. Uh, we'll see timing. Last time it was probably beginning of June. Um, good guess, probably around the same point of time. And then it's just a back and forth ping pong negotiations until there, there's a deal cut. And the, the problem is I don't know what that end date is. Uh, right now it's here sitting here on Valentine's Day. It's not going to be June 30th. It's going to be after that. Maybe something pops up where everyone's just like, okay, uh, we're, we're going to lock this down and move on. That's what's going on in Harrisburg. Just a couple of district things. Uh, if for anybody who lives in the 196 who's watching, uh, the property tax rent rebate program has opened. Feel free to give us a call, schedule an appointment to get that done. Uh, we will also be at the Windy Hill Senior Center as well as the Dover Community Center and Senior Center uh, doing those as well. So give us a call, 717-767-3947. That's great. Grove Unleashed. Grove Unleashed. Unleashed.